Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Avatar video. This is going to be my next Legacy of Yang Chen chapter analysis video. This one will be for chapter 11, which is called Second Option. So it's a relatively short chapter as we see uh, Kavik and Jujinta go to check on Zongdu Hansha. And uh, we get the sort of uh, shocking twist in a way that... Uh, Hansha has been killed. So the assassination that we knew from the description of the book turns out to be Hansha. Um, and the big reveal at the end of the chapter, of course, is that uh, Kavik knows that this is the work of his brother Kalyan. So uh, let's get to the details here and go uh, through this one. So uh, yeah, Jujinta is now pretty familiar with uh, the temple. He's kind of guiding uh, Kavik through here. And we just like go past different spots of the temple that we know about, like the, the bison fountain. Uh, as, as we kind of head upstairs, um, they run past a monk and the monk is like, uh, Master Jujinta, um, you know, what should we do? And Kavik's like, whoa, whoa. Master Jujinta, and um, he just noting that like, whoa, this is a big switch up from the last time I was here. That like, J again, Jujinta is in the kind of higher, more respected position than Kavik, um, and Kavik's like, do you know where you're going? I do. <laughs> um, so he knows that you know the only way for Hancha to make an escape uh, is to basically go through this section of the temple. Otherwise, he would have to like jump out the window off a cl uh, cliff face, basically. That's the kind of whole idea here. They go past a bunch of kind of like temple statues um, as we kind of uh, make our way kind of further in. But then when they get to the car door, again, what did they say? It was like the fourth door in a, in a specific section. Um, when they get to that car door, they find that there is a bunch of people. Five men stood in the hallway. They're not monks. And there's a bit of a kind of discussion here Jujinta is like you shouldn't be here this is a restricted area because again they have a prisoner here who um no one is meant to know about so something's going on here uh Jujinta's warning doesn't seem to kind of scare them away so the initial assumption here is that you guys are head kickers someone has hired you to uh come here so Jujinta draws his knife but this immediately changes the situation because they're all like, whoa, 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 whoa. No one said anything about knives. And it's only the leader of these five men who's kind of like, no, stop talking, you know, hold your ground here. And someone says, I'm not dying for a couple of silvers. I'm going home. So Kavik gets in front of Jujinta and is like, whoa, 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 don't stab anyone. Were you guys basically just hired? Like, for, you, know, you guys are from the village. You were just hired to basically stand here and delay us. Um, and it's confirmed that, like, yes, this is, in fact, the case. Uh, one of them tries to run past them, but, like, Jujinta basically clotheslines him and he falls to the ground. And Kavik is just like, okay, you've seen what we can do. Think about what you want to do. I suggest you guys basically surrender. We won't harm you, but let us by. And so, it's just kind of noted here by Kavik, you know, it's like the um, the enriching place that the qualities of the air nomads were bound to run rub off on its visitors. With quiet grace, the intruders from the village freely chose to accept his invitation to kind of surrender. So they get past these uh, five men here who have been hired. Uh, at this point, Kavik sort of reflects on if this is the strategy kind of being employed here, this is pretty harsh because he notes the way people he is familiar with, the way they play the game, the game of politics. Um, uh, he knows that Yang Chen is like a careful kind of planner and studier who um, uh, always, always wants to be prepared, that uh, Chai Si kind of uh, is typically someone who will um, kind of set uh, set traps almost ahead of time and try to win by being the uh, only kind of survivor left, the lone survivor, which is very much in line with the opening chapter of the book and the presentation of uh, Chai Si from before. Um, but he notes that in this situation, um, uh, intentionally causing a landslide as a distraction and then packing the hallway with just random people from the village to distract is callous just by itself. And so he's kind of like, oh, I guess it must have been Hancha's attempt to kind of uh, escape somehow by doing this. It's uh, a bit kind of harsh for him, but I guess that's the way he is. But as we'll see, um, because Hancha is the one who's actually dead... You obviously reflect on then who actually organized this. And of course, Chai Si. 
which it seems to fit her plan that she would be so cruel and kind of brutal as to just kind of do all of this stuff and not really care about the people. She doesn't care who dies in the, the landslide, um, doesn't care if people, because they're pointing out the whole way through that if those men were more aggressive and stood their ground and um, tried to do the job as expected and they didn't basically have Kavik there, Jujinta probably would have been forced to like cut them down. So Kava kind of saved their lives here. And so the idea is like Chai C was basically willing to sacrifice these people to uh, accomplish her goals. But um, uh, as we go forward here, um, we get to the room, of course. Um, outside the door, there's two air nomads kind of slumped on the ground, um, bleeding from the head. Uh, Kavik checks on them. They are still alive. They've just been kind of knocked out. Um, they head inside, and hit, this is the reveal here. So, uh, a puddle of blood on the floor. Zongdu Hansha lay in the corner, his glassy, unblinking eyes staring up at the ceiling. The Avatar's prisoner was dead. And so, Jujinta and Kavik uh, get to work kind of inspecting the body, figuring out what happened. Um, it is noted that this is, of course, very similar to like the first book, when, at, at, in or around, I guess, maybe, maybe a little later on in the book, but around this point. Uh, Jujinta and Kavik were sent on their first mission together, which was to dispose of bodies, including uh, Q, um, who died in the first book, of course. Um, so it's kind of noted that Kavik kind of patting down Hansha, checking what happened, is kind of similar to that. Um, so um, this is where we get the idea of like, oh, but what? He hasn't been like, obviously, like wounded on the front or the back. It's revealed that Hansha was killed like, through the side that uh, it says here the former Zongdu Binner had been stabbed in the armpit with a very long very thin weapon that was nowhere to be found in the room the wound was a neat lung heart lung channel the way you'd place an arrow for an ideal instant kill on a finned caribou and so um Kavik looks around and then sees oh there's a pool of blood of course but kind of mixing with that is a separate pool of water and he kind of figures out that oh that's how this went down a the weapon that was used here is melting and that's what caused this puddle and Kavik, Kavik realizes that oh I know who does this I know who kind of um, uses that as a type of weapon and so the reveal here is that it wasn't Hancha's style that Kavik had found familiar for all his talents and ingenuity Kalyan sometimes liked to cut corners so it seems like some sort of a um uh ice kind of uh arrow ice kind of icicle shard and um, that's how uh Kalyan was the one who actually killed Hansha here which is interesting by itself because of course the first book established to us that those two knew each other from when they were younger that Hansha is effectively kind of like the person Kalyan met who kind of led Kalyan kind of down the path of um becoming an errand runner uh leaving uh being Ur behind um, and, of course, the big um, thing that uh, gave Hansha unanimity in the first book was Kalyan um, being activated as the kind of sleeper agent within um, Chai C's organization, and that's how he got um, unanimity for Hansha. So what's happening here? Because, of course, we've been speculating um, from the book earlier on about the whole idea of... Um, Kalyan must be playing undercover um, with Chai C to kind of protect himself. Um, but the implication would have been still that he theoretically is still loyal to Han Shu. But this being it directly confirmed that like it was he who killed Han Shu is like, wh where does that place everything? Is it just that he did this to protect himself, that the friendship with Hansha doesn't mean as much as his life, or is there something else going on here? It, it certainly adds an extra layer of detail uh, to Kalyan in terms of kind of what he's up to. The, the idea of like he did this assassination job, and as far as we're aware, it was planned by Chai C. And so we're going to see how a bunch of this stuff ends up kind of playing out kind of uh, as we go forward. But um, the idea is that Kalyan has just in very very quickly again everything like they've been acting reacting very quickly to the incident actually happening here so they, there hasn't been too much time and Kalyan has managed to sort of get in uh, kill and get out so um that speaks to the skill of Kalyan which was presented of course in the first book um quite heavily but that is 
uh, this chapter. So like I said, um, pretty to the point, but there's some nice stuff going on here of just, you know, okay, Kavik, Jujinta team up. They don't really interact a lot, but it's just kind of Kavik accepting that like, oh yeah, kind of I brought you into the fold, but now you're kind of, uh, kind of a higher ranking member of the team than I am. Um, I actually like the middle section um, with uh, them interacting with the villagers who have kind of been hired and the different approach of like Jujinta versus Kavik and like Kavik is much better with people. Jujinta just gets straight down to business. It's a it's a nice contrast. Um, and then even the description of like uh, Kavik going through the approaches that various people that he knows kind of how they play the game um, it is kind of nice to, to kind of see of just the kind of brutal way in which like all of this stuff is orchestrated just to theoretically um, uh, help someone to escape. But obviously what this confirms to us is that Hansha, it was never planned to like get him out, like extract him. So it seems like unanimity is of, of, makes sense. We, we knew this was going to be the case. Unanimity is prized above him like a hundred percent. But as we'll see as we go forward, there's even some twists and turns with the exact details of how this all plays out so uh, we'll get into that in the next chapter but um for now uh, that has been um chapter 11 so in the comments let me know what your thoughts were on this chapter but that's been the video thanks for watching and bye